Welcome back to Diet Doctor News on YouTube. I'm your host, Dr. Brett Scher, and today I want to talk about ketones for decompensated heart failure. One of the worst and hardest to treat conditions actually looks like it improves by adding ketone. And this is potentially groundbreaking. It's very early. We still need a lot of more studies to come, but just seeing this published in a journal is pretty amazing. So let's talk about this. It's called Acute Hemodynamic Effect of Ketone Bodies in Patients with Decompensated Heart Failure and was published in the European Heart Journal Acute Cardiovascular Care. Let's talk about some terms here first. Acute decompensated heart failure. So this is patients who, whose hearts are not pumping well at all. Normal ejection fraction, or the percentage of blood that each heart pumps, is about 50, 55, 60%. Um, these patients were at like 19%, which is really low. Plus, they were decompensated, meaning they were in the intensive care unit on medications to help their hearts pump better because they were filling up with fluid in their lungs and in their bodies and their heart wasn't pumping enough blood forward. Too much was going backwards. That's decompensated heart failure. It's a life-threatening condition. It's very difficult to treat. And they, we put you on medications. This one that they were on in this study was called milrinone, which is supposed to really stimulate the heart to pump better. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. It's just, it's very difficult um, um, situation to treat. So there were only eight patients in this trial. Um, and it wasn't randomized. They each, all eight patients got an oral beta-hydroxybutyrate supplement. Uh, it was a ketone ester from HVMN. Um, but what they found was pretty remarkable. So they got their ketones up to an average of 1.8 millimoles per liter. Um, the highest was 2.5. But here's most importantly, within just three hours of giving the ketones, the cardiac index, which is a marker of, of how much blood your heart is pumping, increased from 2.5 to 3.4, um, which is a dramatic, dramatic increase. Now, cardiac index is calculated as basically the amount of, of blood that your heart is pumping, the cardiac output, and divided by your, your size or your, or your weight, your um, body mass. So it, it was not, it's heart rate plus stroke volume, meaning how much each... Um, how much blood is pumped out with each beat. And it was not because of the heart rate, they said. So it's not because the heart rate sped up, which means by default, it was because the heart was pumping out more blood with each beat, which is really dramatic to see with just something as simple as a ketone ester. And then once they stopped the ketones, the cardiac index returned to normal, or not to normal, sorry, returned to their baseline after just 24 hours. So it shows that it is you know, a limited effect for while you're giving the ketones, but boy, was it a power effect while giving the ketones. So if this has a potential, something as simple as just giving exogenous ketones to people who are in the hospital um, on pressors to support their heart function, that's pretty dramatic. And maybe shows that we shouldn't be feeding people in the hospital um, all these high carb foods, maybe we should be feeding them lower carb ketogenic diets and supplementing with exogenous ketones. Maybe that's even a better way to go for treating decompensated congestive heart failure, right? Not studied in this trial, total hypothesis on my part, but boy, is this an interesting and exciting field that something as simple as exogenous ketones could help people with decompensated heart failure. Then the next question is, you know, people who have more moderate heart failure walking around with some symptoms, short of breath, maybe can't exercise, but not so bad that they're in the hospital. Could ketones help that population as well? I think that's another really interesting area of study. So I'm really thankful I saw this paper um, and Dr. Brianna Stubbs shared it with me at, when we were at Metabolic Health Summit. So I really appreciate her sharing that paper with me because really interest, uh, at, opens up a whole fascinating, interesting field that I'm looking for um, more exciting news from in the future. Anyway, hope this was helpful, something interesting to think about. Uh, we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.